Hello, uh, my name is um, Noble Thomas. I'm one of the, on the board of the Integrated Medical Society for North Carolina. And I have with us today, um, Dr. Steve N, as you like to be called, but Dr. Steve um, Noseworthy. And uh, Dr. Noseworthy is, is a teacher of, of providers. He teaches other doctors. He's uh, taught on subjects as, as uh, widely as the gut, as thyroid, as uh, his main focus though is trying to get people to feel normal, to, to not to have hope. And so with any, without any further ado, I give you Dr. Ian. <laughs> Thanks, I, I appreciate it. And, uh, and it's nice to be here talking with you. Yeah, so once you, you know, the conference is coming up and yep. uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about um, all the great things you're gonna teach us and the subject matters at the conference coming up um, um, in June. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, when, uh, when JJ reached out to me to be part of this, uh, she asked me what I wanted to teach on and, and my brain actually froze because there's so many things that, that um, people would be interested in topics that I think need to be discussed. And um, I finally decided to talk about some of the changes in the world of immunology, uh, particularly in terms of our understanding of how the immune system works and, and some newer testing that's become available within the last uh, eight to 10 months. Um, because this is, uh, you know, as a functional medicine practitioner, and I think anybody who works in this field at, you know, what, whatever level of the stratum they're in, uh, recognize that over the last decade or so, healthcare consumers and their problems have become more complex. They've become better educated. And, you know, we as practitioners kind of have to stay ahead of the curve. Um, and what are the more consistent problems that walks into offices like mine or anyone else who might be attending the conference uh, is that complex chronic autoimmune type patient. And so I started thinking just, you know, really kind of about my own trajectory and learning about the immune system, about how to manage complex and chronic diseases. And it doesn't have to be autoimmunity. There's any number of other complex chronic inflammatory type disorders that what I will be talking about will be relevant to. But ultimately at the end, um, I decided to try to narrow my discussion down to what I'm calling the new immunology of Hashimoto's disease and inflammatory type conditions. And, and I think that um, for most people who are in functional medicine, they'll kind of get that right away. Uh, and I'm hoping to tease people into going, wow, there's new information and there's new understanding about the immune system, about the mechanisms of autoimmunity. Uh, and what I wanted to bring out really is the fact that we have tools available to us now in terms of diagnostics that give us insights at a level of detail that simply was not available to us, like I said, about eight months ago. Um, and so we're really kind of into a new era, which is a very exciting prospect because as good as we think we might be at managing complex chronic conditions and autoimmunities of various types, there's always more to know, there's always more to learn. And every single one of us has had that experience where you know, we've had maybe a week or two of success after success after success. And then that one case walks in that you realize you're kind of out of your depth a little bit, even if you've been in practice for 20, 25, 30 years, um, which is at, at the same time, both maddening and frustrating, but also exhilarating because there's always something else to learn. And so my, my hope is that my discussion on this, let's call it the new immunology, uh, is going to set off some light bulbs and aha moments. People are going to be really inspired uh, to either begin learning or continue learning and take advantage of some of the new tools that are available to us as clinicians. You know, um, one of the things that um, you said that uh, sort of wrong with me is that um, you get those clients that come in that you, you know, that have those complex pieces. Um, yeah. But what you give them is, is hope because you're not, you're trying to find a solution. And yeah. so, you, you, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I'd say that I, I'm certainly not alone in, in the experience of someone coming to me after having seen two or three other clinicians, sometimes 12 to 15 other clinicians. And 
sometimes people will actually voice it like, if you can't help me, I don't know where else to go because I've been everywhere, I've done everything. And that's all obviously from their perspective. I mean, if there are things that I don't know as a clinician and if there are things that I have yet to learn as a clinician, can't really expect the average healthcare consumer. Although, like I said a minute ago, the average healthcare consumer is a lot more educated these days, um, mostly because of high quality self-learning books that have been published by any number of people that are in the functional medicine space. Plus all the summits that tend to happen online. I mean, there's kind of an explosion of that kind of activity on the internet. And, and so what I've experienced personally is that um, th there is a section of people with uh, that are kind of in the spectrum of autoimmunity that can read a book that's designed to be more like self-help, make a few diet changes, take a few supplements, and all of a sudden their life is quite a bit better. But depending on where people are in the development of the autoimmune process, the whole do-it-yourself approach uh, tends to have kind of a, a self-limiting element to it just because there's only so much people can do on their own if they have a big void in terms of their knowledge base and, and what's triggering their autoimmunity or what they can actually do about it. And, you know, to try to bring this back full circle and prevent me from getting down a bunny trail, um, we as clinicians are, are kind of in that space as well. And, you know, I'd be willing to bet that a large portion of the practitioners that are going to be at the conference listening to me and other presenters some of them are going to be well, very well versed in how the immune system works, and they're going to be actively doing those types of things in their office. And there's going to be some people who, you know, maybe know immunology is important, but maybe they don't know where to go to learn about this stuff, and, or they don't know the tools and the diagnostics and ultimately the interventions that are available to them. But ultimately, at the end of the day, my ability to instill hope into a person who might be falling into a state of despair over their health is predicated on my ability to see that bigger picture and to look at their, look at their case, if you will, and sometimes I don't even like using that word, um, but to look at their case through the lens of the neuroendocrine immune system. And it, you know, it just so happens, and this is my opinion, even though the brain, the hormones, and the immune system are all integral parts of our central control system, uh, it seems to me that the immune system is perhaps the most complex of those. Um, and it is the one which at this point, we have more diagnostic tools available to us to kind of have insight into what's going on. And, and the reason why I think this is important is because in the last 10 to 15 years, there's been an evolution of our clinical approach to autoimmunity and accounting for things like Th1 dominance, Th2 dominance, or failure of T regulatory cells. Um, but the immunology research has advanced beyond those simplistic models. And, and so one of the things I'm going to spend some time doing in the beginning of the presentation that I'm going to do for the group is we're going to kind of track very quickly the evolution of the different immunology paradigms that have shown up in the research. And thank we, thankfully we have some very well-trained PhD immunologists and Harvard type researchers that are taking that information and then translating it into something that we can understand as clinicians and something that we can do things about. There's a tremendous amount of information in the literature that is nice to know, but we can't have an impact on it. And sometimes there's not even tests available on, unless you're in the research field. And so um, what I'm really excited about the most is to share some of this new information with practitioners and try to help them upgrade their, their understanding of immunology, but most importantly, to do it in a way that says, hey, we can test for this. We can have an impact on somebody's lymphocyte profile, which is, you know, we'll explain what that is when we, when we talk in the lecture. Um, and ultimately, to get back to what your question was about instilling hope, is that it's very difficult to, under, to be able to instill hope in someone who's been suffering for two to 20 years um, if you don't have the proper perspective of complex chronic conditions or always rooted in a breakdown of brain hormones and immune system and how those things are communicating. And the role the immune system plays as a main driver of autoimmunity, that's kind of like a, a, like a self-evident statement. But my ability to instill hope in people who feel like they have no hope left 
is really based on how elevated my understanding of the immune system is, my ability to test and intervene and actually make something change. Um, and I feel like I've gone off on a little bit of a bunny trail, but you know, I, I, I get the whole thing. Like hope is, hope is the currency of functional medicine in some ways, because people come in and they might not, they might not say to you, you know, I've got um, an imbalance between my TH17 and my regulatory T cells. They don't know those things. All they know is they're suffering and they're getting to the end of the rope where they're saying like, I don't see any hope because I've seen 18 different doctors in different disciplines. I've done conventional, I've done alternative. And so far, nothing's made a difference. Um, in my experience, those cases always involve some type of skewed immunological profile that we now can test for and do some interventions and have a reasonable expectation that we can be more uh, precise in our manipulation of their physiology. And, and I'll just kind of stop there because I could keep going on and on and on. Yeah, so you're going to give us uh, tools to test and evaluate those people and to be able to help them. So that's yeah. great. So we, we look yeah, forward right, to Yeah, in fact, specifically what we'll be talking about is not just the, the history and the evolution of immunology up to our current understanding, but we'll be talking about, uh, and I have no affiliation with them, uh, we'll be talking about uh, Cyrex Labs and their recently um, unveiled, I guess is the word, their, their new test called the lymphocyte map. And what that does is it gives us a detailed breakdown of uh, T cells and B cells and natural killer cells into their different subpopulations. So we can stop wondering, is someone TH1 dominant or TH2 dominant? It, that used to be the entirety of our immunological model, but now I see, you know, I've run a lot of these tests since August, August of last year, mostly in clients who have autoimmunity. And I'm telling you, not all of them have a TH1 or TH2 dominance pattern. Their problem might be in the TH17 system or in CD4 cells. And it's a lot more complicated than what we even taught in our seminars over the last decade. All right, the, the, the nose where we're going to sit, let, save the other good stuff for the, for the conference. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, are, you gonna, are you going to touch on the, um, um, what's going on with the current situation, the pandemic and that kind of thing, just a little bit maybe? Um, not specifically. I mean, gosh, there's so much that potentially could be said and maybe somebody else at the conference, you know, certainly could do a much better job than I would at that. Um, you know, only to say that in, the things that I'm going to talk about are relevant to, you know, kind of like the COVID long haulers. Um, and and I, I have some particular insights into some of the relationships between these lymphocyte profiles and people who are more susceptible to getting coronavirus and, and perhaps the COVID syndrome uh, versus those who might be able to stave it off. Um, those things I think are directly linked to the function of very specific subsets of white blood cells. And again, now we can test for those. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, that knows where we, we thank you for being part of the conference. We look forward to joining that. You gave a lot of good highlights and we got excited to be happy. No, you can tell I'm, I'm passionate about it. It's easy for me to get carried away, but thank you. I appreciate your time.